Genesis chapter 28 from verse 12 through 18. And he dreamed. Let's read together. One to go. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Verse 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou lest thee will I give it to thy seed. Verse 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad from the west to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Go on. And behold, I am with thee. And I will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest. I will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. Of. Verse 16. Verse 16. And Jacob awake out of the sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Verse 17. And he was afraid. And he said, Now dreadful is the place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow and set it for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Sit down balanciously on your enemy's head. I will be teaching a little bit and I will be brief with you today. I want to share with us on what I call the Sulam anointing. Somebody say the Sulam anointing. Shout it well. S U W L A M anointing. Follow it. S U X U as in for sign. Double L A M, the Sulam anointing. And I said to you, the word Sulam is from the Hebrew word, is the Hebrew word for ladder. The word Sulam is the Hebrew word for ladder. And so when we say the Sulam anointing, and we talked about the Sulam anointing, we talk about the ladder anointing. And that's our purpose, and that's what we are handling today. I prophesy to somebody here, uh, I see you clamping the ladder that no man will take away. Maybe if that amen is louder, somebody will shout a bigger amen more. We did establish on Wednesday that so many people had open heaven in the Bible. So many people have open heaven in the Bible. But this open heaven of Jacob was different because this open heaven of Jacob was an open heaven that had connection with ladder and so we begin to say that it is okay for somebody to tell you that ah, 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 the heaven is open but how do you assess an heaven that is open we say the open heaven that Jacob experience was a different one because this open heaven had a ladder had a process as a connection between heaven and earth and then i begin to explain to you that it's okay for somebody to tell you that i'm going to you are going to make one billion naira, but how are you going to make it is what you don't understand it's okay for a man of god to walk up to you and tell you that i see you i see you in wet but how are you going to get the wet 
So the Sulam anointing is an anointing that gives you the provision of the promise and the process to the promise. So that if a man has the promise and does not know how to get the promise, he, he carries what I call a wishy desire or promise without act actualizing it. So we find out that in the body of Christ, so many of you have received prophecies that are very heavy, but yet there are no manifest. So every man you see experiencing open heaven, there is a ladder that has taken him to that open heaven. There is not enough for heaven to open. There is a process to assess what heaven has brought down. Can I prophesy to somebody here? I prophesy to somebody here that that thing that will lift you to the next level is here by release for you. Uh, maybe if you shout that amen, you are going there right now. In fact, this is the only scripture that talks more about a ladder in the whole Bible. All that might talk about staircase, but when we talk about a ladder and heaven open up, this is the only scripture. And I share with you that in John chapter 1 verse 51, and he said unto him, really I say unto you, here, hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and angels of God ascending, descending upon the Son of Man. And I explained to you on Wednesday that the Son of God is a ladder. He's the, he's the sulam that we need. I prophesied to somebody here. I prophesy to somebody here what that ladder is to Jacob in the Old Testament is what Jesus is to you in the New Testament can I prophesy to somebody that thing that will take you to where you desire today I release I don't like the way they are shouting the amen shout that amen like thunder Papa, I have a vision. I saw money, but I don't know how to get the money. I am introducing to you the Sulam anointing. The anointing that will make you see it, capture it, actualize it, and manifest it. Can I prophesy to somebody? Papa, I desire to be a governor, but I don't know how to get there. The desire is an open heaven, but to get there, there is a ladder that can take you there. And it's called the Sulam anointing. The Sulam anointing is the visa that qualify you to where you are about to enter. Can I prophesy? Papa, I saw a vision of my wedding, but I am 45 and I've not gotten married. It simply means in your revelation, the heaven is open, but if you have not married, it means the Sulam anointing has not been released. I prophesy to somebody here. That anointing that will thank you to your desire, I hereby release it for your life. You don't get what I'm saying. Papa, I had a vision. I saw myself building estate, but I have not been able to build it. Building estate is an open heaven, but getting into it is a ladder that will take you there. Can I prophesy to somebody here? To 1,003 of you, that ladder that will take you to your desire, I set it now. Am I prophesying to somebody here? You will enter, you will enter, you will enter that ladder that will take you to your desire am i prophesying to somebody here papa i had a vision i saw myself giving birth to triplet but ever since for about 18 years now i don't have a baby it is because there is no ladder between your open heaven and the earth can i prophesy that ladder you will climb to enter your desire i put it at your door post huh? oh somebody is not getting what i'm saying the louder that amen somebody's entering that level somebody shot fire I prophesy it will not just be a dream it's about to come to pass and when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion around we were like men that dream dream that dream 
dream is about to turn to reality. Am I talking to somebody here? That anointing that manifests what you desire. I prophesy in less than 48 hours. That anointing drop on your doorpost. Am I talking to somebody here? You have received prophecy for many great prophets. But it has never come to pass. But here today there is a ladder from heaven today. Pitch at your doorpost. You are about to enter into a new level. I prophesy the Sulam anointing to take you to that level. Sit down. Let's take the scripture and read it before I move forward. But verse 12 of Genesis 28. Let's do this quickly. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on earth and on top of it it reached heaven mm -hmm. <laughs> and behold the angels of God ascending and descending bring that ladder let's do something again he saw a ladder set up from where set up from where on where was it set up in heaven no where was the ladder set up no please was it set up in heaven where was the ladder set up this is the most painful part that most believers think you think money will come from heaven no you think the healing is going to come from heaven it has been set there is a system god has set up here that is why there is called an healing minister the healing that most of you are looking for has left heaven is in the hands of a man called an healing minister he has set up the ladder oh the prosperity that some of you are looking for is not in heaven again it has been set up and programmed in a man believe the lord god thou shall be established believe his prophet thou shall prosper am i talking to somebody here is it God that will prosper you? Your prosperity is attached to who? A prophet. God set up a ladder. Not in heaven. Not in heaven. On earth. So the system that will change your life is on earth here. Whatever you bind on earth. I will not stay in heaven and bind it. Whatever you lose on earth, I will not stay in heaven and lose. If you don't lose on earth, I don't lose in heaven. If you don't bind on earth, I don't bind in heaven. If you don't walk on earth, nothing works here. If you don't desire healing here, no healing can come because everything has been set up from heaven on earth. See that. Follow me. Put that same verse 12 again. I need you to follow me. And he dream and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and on top of it reach to heaven and behold, the angels of God ascending, descending. Angels are going up and angels are going down. So what is the meaning of this ladder anointing? God is trying to say, no matter how anointed and prayerful you are, there is a process to assess open heaven. Every one of you have a spiritual ladder. But the problem is that, have you located it? Some of you are fortunate to locate. Uh, Papa, what do you mean by ladder? I will explain to you. Your ladder is any connection you have that have made you rich. Your ladder is anything that you do that have turned your life around. If you abandon it, you have abandoned your key to open heaven. Let me explain. Every one of you have a ladder. Some of you might have studied accountancy, medicine, law, and yet you are not making money from law. You are a lawyer, but yet you are not making money from law. But yet, you do contract and you make money. That contract is your ladder. 
Don't say because I am a doctor, I have to stay around medicine. No, you have to check what is the thing that are in my doorpost that took me up. It is that thing that took you up that is your ladder. You can be a you can be a medical doctor, but yet you are getting contract in in security expertise, and yet you are not a security man. You are not even a general. It simply means where you have access to clamp up. That is your sulama. That is your sulam. That is your what? Your ladder. And the problem with most of you is that you don't understand that God does not have three ways to lift up a man, but a dimension to lift up a man. Now hear me, some of you, your ladder is not business. Your ladder is not anybody but a person. A person, a man. One connection to that man. Check when your life turned around, who did you meet? What did he do to your life? And what are the contribution? That is your sulam. Some of you, your ladder can be your wife. Ever since you married her, you became rich. You became better. You were exposed to so many people. That is your sulam. Some of you, your ladder is your husband. Some of you, your ladder is your man of God. Some of you, your ladder is your boss. Some of you, your ladder, your ladder, your ladder is that person you despise. It can be your younger sister, your elder brother. Since you met with them, they contributed. You got a house. They exposed you. You got connection. Can I say this? God said, I have set the system. If you abandon them, your heaven will open, but you will not assess. Sit down. Sit down. Let me talk to you. Some of you are accusing the people who are your breadwinners, the people that help you. Your elder brother helped you to build a house, your uncle helped you to build a house. After that, gave you money for business. Then, then you now say he's a witch, he's a wizard. And after that, he turned his back. You are now living in poverty. Then to help yourself to be comfortable, you said he's using my star. The problem is that you have abandoned your ladder and your ladder has been folded up from you. Some of you, your wife can be your ladder. Ever since she entered, she's industrious, she's calculating, she has idea, she's hard working, she goes for contract, she do everything that she do. Because of her, everybody see you as a rich man, but they don't understand that she's the brain behind everything. The day you push her away, you have pushed your sulam away. How do you know who is your ladder? Check the time you begin to become better, become wealthy, become blessed. Don't shy away. You might not like the ladder. You might not like their face. But if they have lifted you up, they are your sulam. I made my first 10 million four years ago. How did I make it? Who gave me the connection? Am I still watering the connection? Some of you, you have abandoned this ladder. You are looking for another ladder. God does not have two ladder. No, no, no. If there will be another ladder, you must go up to get another ladder. If you abandon this ladder, you cannot connect to the other ladder. Because there are no two realms to lift you up. In the realm of the Sulama, there is another first heaven. There is the second heaven. There is the third heaven. The problem is your foundation of Sulam, your foundation and your ladder, what have you done with the lifters? I want to go up. But I don't need any man. It's a lie. You can go up. Sit down, let me talk to you. I want to go up. I don't need an helper. It's a lie. God is a spirit. He does not do bank transfer. 
He will need a man to do a transfer. And any time you ask God for lifting, he sends a man as a sulam. He sent a man as a ladder. And can I say this? Every ladder has a step. And the reason why a ladder has a step is because what you do with step one will determine whether you can go to step two. That's why God will bring a man to your life. He will give you three million and begin to observe your attitude towards him. And then when you now water it where he gives you another 10 million. And then when you water it where he says, Friend, I don't need to give you money. Let me introduce you to how I make money. So here it is some of you, you just got the first breakthrough. You push your ladder away. So you can be a son under a father. And be anointed and feel that the anointing is everything. But you don't understand that there are deeper things of the spirit that you can't get from the surface. That's why most sons, when they break out from their father, they start a church. They expect the church to grow overnight. When the church does not grow, they say, Hi, the father, old dog must see me. He has put, he's doing a charm. Ah, ah, ah. Am I not prophesying like him? Am I not praying like him? Why is my own church not going? Your own church will not go because you have left your ladder. The thing is not, the thing is not behaving like him. It's following a system. Where is the ladder established? On earth. On earth. So the solemn anointing is an anointing that connects earth to heaven and heaven to earth. When you are under this anointing, people think that you have done juju. Because you are so connected. Earth to heaven. Heaven to earth. Because that anointing brings heaven down directly to you. We know not how to pray, but how be the Spirit of God helped us in our infirmity. What does that mean? That whenever you are having this kind of oil, you begin to operate in a demystifying way. I mean, you in a mysterious way that men cannot understand. Why? Because you are connected. The anointing means Christos. And Christos is the anointed one. Or an anointed king. And you know, the simple meaning of Christianity is anointed people. And they were first called Christian in Antioch. You must understand that there are different kind of the anointing. We have the Davidic anointing. We have the Mosaic anointing. We have the anointing that destroys the yoke. But this anointing I'm talking about is a Sulam anointing. It's an anointing that you cannot predict and explain by just, by just shouting. This is not an anointing that makes people fall down under the oil. It's beyond falling down under the oil. It's having access to mysterious secrets. Can I teach somebody here? Somebody said, fire. A man put his head on a pillow and was having sweet dream. <laughs> when you have this kind of anointed, it doesn't matter whether you don't have a vital form, whether you don't have a pillowcase, it doesn't matter whether you are in Biagi across. When this anointing comes to your house, it will, it will defy your background. Your head can be on the pillow and the pillow can turn to a pillar. Your head can be on the pillow and yet you are seeing visions of angels. You can be in the wilderness and nothing is working. It's not about being in an AC. Don't forget, this guy has run away from his father and from on his brother. But in the wilderness, in the 
midst of frustration there was no pillow his head was on a stone but it doesn't matter this anointing comes to people in the wilderness this anointing comes to people when there is hardship can I prophesy to have some people here that everything is blocked that everything around your life is hard like a stone but can I prophesy that stone is about to open you to the next level somebody shot fire shot fire you're about to enter the next level. You're about to enter the next level. I hear the Sulam anointing. Papa, I have been in the wilderness. Can God visit me? Yes. The Lord said, I have been down the ladder. I will establish it in your wilderness. Can I prophesy? I don't know how long you have been in the wilderness, but in less than 48 hours, your stone is about to turn to pillar. Can I prophesy? Even in the wilderness you can have a good dream can I prophesy where others have concluded you Jehovah is about to manifest Jehovah 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 is about to manifest see now put the next verse let's move quickly put it verse 13 and beyond the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land wherein thou lest. To thee I will give it unto thy seed. Hear what God says. I love this. When I hear people say, Don't call, don't call God, God of any man. God himself is the one calling himself the God of Abraham. God attached himself to a man. He said, I am the Lord God. That's who I am now. I am not the God of Abraham. One. I am not the God of Isaac. Now I have not finished with you. That's why I can't call you the God of Jacob. Until you have encountered Sulam. That's why we say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Don't forget, this is the first time God will be introducing himself to Jacob. Because Isaac has seen him. Because Abraham has seen him. So Jacob did not know him. So he said, you have not known me. I can't call you the God of Jacob. Until you, are, until you experience this sulam. Until you experience this ladder. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Joshua Igila. If I said it, will I not do it? I prophesy. You will go up. You will go up. You will go up. I say you will go up. I say you will go up. I say you will go up. Can I say this? Value people in life. The person that hurt you today can help you tomorrow. When you are prayed in the Sulam anointing, people will think you are doing something. I've seen most of my colleagues asking, how is it just like Gila having money? Everything is just doing double, 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 double. How? How manage? How is he having money? I've discovered my sulam. I water it. I stay around it. You must understand what is the source of your strength in life. Stay around it and water it. Some of you, you have eaten. Let me tell you, once you cut off yourself from your ladder, some of you, will, it's not a cause. You can't go up. God does not have any extra provision anywhere. He brings it once. You will never see another ladder after that ladder. And you cannot create it yourself. That's the problem. Stop thinking that people that love, people that you love are the ones that will help you. There are people that are going to help you that, don't, that you don't love. In destiny, there is no tribalism. He must speak my language. There is no gender discrimination. 
There is no religious sentiment. He must be Christian. He must be tongue talker. He can be an allergy, an allergy. It doesn't matter if it's your sulam, it's your sulam. You know, get to me. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? That's why when Zacchaeus saw him, they said, This guy is a sinner. Jesus said, Keep quiet. I'm going to his house. I'm going to his house. Zacchaeus, come down. Zacchaeus said, I am a, st- I'm a sinner. I used to steal money very, very well. Jesus said, That's me. He said, Today salvation has come to your house. Salvation has come. That is the purpose of the gospel. The purpose of the gospel is not to condemn, it's to bring people out of sin and condemn sin and not the sinner. We condemn sin and not the sinner. Can I say this about the Sulam anointing? I didn't say this in verse 1. In verse 12. You will see angels ascending and you will see some descending. Let me explain. Very well. Okay. Come. Come. Come and clamber. Clamber. Let me explain. Can I get one of the year protocol? Stay down. Hold here. Go up again. What does the Sulam anointing mean? It simply means in life. No matter how you do it, there are people going up in life and there are people coming down. That you will have, you will always see people going down in life, and you always see people going up. That is how God has designed life. It doesn't matter the amount of prayer you pray. When your time to come down, come, you will come down. Even angels come down and angels go up. Maybe you don't understand. Let me explain again. That in life, there are times that people will go up. And there are times that people will go down. That some...